Hello friends, welcome back to another video. So today we'll break the season 15 video strand and finally upload the sequel to the ranking the season video that I made around two months ago. That one was for message of spinges so only, but today's ranking will be for the wild brand seasons only. This will include season 11, I won't separate the two chapters because I think that's a dumb move, season 12, season 13, the island and season 14. The only reason I'm including the island is because I want this video to have 5 spots instead of 4 for no reason. So yeah, let's get started with my least favorite wild brain season. I talked about season 11 many times on my channel and even on other people's channels. And all of that talking about it was just ranting it. I hated season 11 since it was released and I still don't like it any better. So what should we start with? Maybe mention how this season is the biggest prank in the history of the show. This season is all about creativity and doing new things, while it's the third time Zayn misleadingly dies, fourth time he gets snake villains, fifth villain that has a secret relationship with Wu who somehow never told the ninja about it before. Most ideas and storylines this season brings are either copied from old ninjago or just poorly done. Like Kai's perilous arc. I still think it's the biggest rotting crime the show has ever committed. They literally butchered Kai's character. And uh, don't give me the people change excuse because it makes the situation even worse. Just watch season 5 Kai, season 11 Kai, then compare them. It's just sad. The villains of the season are also very weak, especially Asphira and her army. Aside from the whole revenge thing, which is so bad that it's hilarious, she has very unrealistic and dub motives that make zero sense. She's mad at Wu for punishing her because she was the one to betray him. I mean, what she was expecting from him after she broke the vow? A kiss? I can go on and on about the stupid writing choices of the season and how it butchers every character present in the scenes. The dialogue became way weaker and the humor is just painful. The animation isn't awful but a huge downgrade from the Ono trilogy, overall nothing works in the season, I feel like it didn't do anything right, even things that seem good in the beginning and end up as a huge disappointment like the Forbidden Spinjutsu or the Ice Emperor which were both amazing concepts but very poorly executed, not to mention the horrendous filler episodes. So yeah, I think that season 11 will always be remembered as Ninjago's biggest disappointment. The only reason why this is above season 11 is because it's way shorter so all its problems are way less noticeable. But I think it's impressive how 44 minutes managed to show all of these issues. So yeah, for the island it has the same problems as season 11 but less severe, at least it didn't ruin any of the characters. And that's not necessarily a good thing because it doesn't even give any personality or role to any of the characters. They are all either very bland or very annoying. The ninja and the keepers are bland, Tim and Clutch Powers and Ronan are annoying. And the dialogue is just hilarious. What'll it be, leaded or unleaded? You already asked us already that. Asked the villains, if you even count them as villains, are not very good. I kinda like the idea of them giving supplies to this overpowered mysterious creature they don't know much about just to stay alive, but a lot of questions come with this, like how did they not notice it's a fake monster all this time, they didn't even try to make sure once, and the Ronin reveal was very dumb. Even though I'm not against running being bad like this, but I wish it was at least interesting like in season 6 where it had something to do with his past and how he was friends with the ninja and all, here it's just running bad, which shows how shallow the writing is. Also I'm sorry but I don't like Zippy, he's just too annoying in my opinion and wastes a lot of time for an installment where every second matters. And Twitch hit him is another level of irritation. I hate that guy, but I still enjoy some aspects of this mini season like the setting, I love the island as a location and it's very beautiful. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for the pros. So yeah, not a fan of this one. Moving from bad seasons to decent ones, we have Prime Empire. I mean sure, this is not Sons of Gunner level of writing or Skybound level of characterization, it's a little simple fun story, that's all. I'd rather look at it as a mini season or something like that. I like the video game ID and the execution was surprisingly good. I love the avatars, the NPCs, the skill tree, the game zones, the four lives, all of these are very fun ideas that make the season feel alive. They gave us boss fights, platforming levels, racing levels, I see the video game idea was done in one of the best ways possible. But that's really all to the season. Everything else wasn't done in the best way possible. This is probably the worst season for the ninja. They are all so bland and did nothing big, even Jay. He only did something in the last two episodes. The villains are very mediocre, the dialogue is just not the best. Onigami was isolated for the entire season until the last episode where they tried to make him emotional but it didn't really work because I didn't grow to like him or sympathize with him during the season. So yeah, overall, I love the video game idea and its execution, this was a fun season to watch but compared to the other seasons of the show that have very strong writing, characterization and themes, Prime Empire doesn't come near the level of those. 
Now, Sea Bound is an interesting season. If it wasn't for those last four episodes, I'd put this below Prime Empire. But that finale really saved it. I'm gonna say that Nia's sacrifice in her last scene with the ninja in the last episode is probably Ninjago's most emotional scene ever. It's an emotional roller coaster. We went from yay, the day is safe, to crying because of what happened to Nia. The whole transformation scene and her pulling the water out of Jay's lungs, some of the best scenes of the entire show that delivered very strong emotions. I also love the evacuation scene, Calamar's death, even Jay and Nia playing their dance game. The last five episodes were really good, but the rest, not really. The first few episodes were very childish, mostly because of Maya. I think she was very poorly written in the season. They portrayed her as the stereotypical annoying mother, which was painful to watch. Ray was also awful, but Calamar and the Morlopians were very cool. By far the best villains of New Ninjago. I like their dynamic, Bethemar was fun too, but we have another problem, which is the Keepers, probably the biggest disappointment of the entire show. The island's whole existence was supposed to hype up the Keepers' return in Seabound, yet we get this lame episode where the ninjas just somehow get the amulet from them, then leave. That was the worst possible way they could have written the Keepers in this season. I was expecting some sort of war between the Keepers and the Merlopians, but that didn't happen. So yeah, overall, I think this was a decent season, had a nice flow with an amazing ending. But Trey and Maya, episodes 7 to 11, the Keepers' execution, and some other typical new Ninjago problems keep it away from being one of my favorite seasons. And now to my favorite new Ninjago season, season 13. I was obsessed with this season when it first came out and I went as far as to putting it as my 4th favorite season overall, which is obviously not the case anymore. But the main reason to why I went this crazy over this season is because it's Cole's first official season. Cole has been by far my favorite ninja for 6 years now and my biggest wish for Ninjago was to get a Cole season. And I think Cole was great in this season. Some people say that he didn't get developed, he only got more focus. But that's not entirely true, the whole promise thing kind of developed his character in the finale and knowing how great of a warrior his mother was and that he should live up to her. It also showed us more of him, more of his personality, his past, his leading nature. So Cole was great in this season, I really enjoyed him. But I'd say he was better in the Oni trilogy. The other ninja were also cool and I like how the story was split to three different ones who had a fun story too. I liked how he started feeling useless because it's something that uh, fans noticed too during the last few seasons. The other ninja stories though, I'm not a fan of. I expected a lot from them but they ended up barely being taken seriously by the writers themselves. I mean seriously, you are having snail races and people throwing stones as a welcoming sign in one episode and expect me to take this seriously and actually consider liking it. I feel like the Masa and Gekko story could have been better, but I still don't think it's awful, I like some scenes from that arc. The Apoli were a great addition and helped make Cole's story better. The villains were Prime Empire level, nothing big. I'd say Onagami is even better than the Skull Sorcerer, he was very annoying in my opinion. And the animation improved, especially that one take fuss in the end, they were awesome. Overall, a good season, best one from Wild Brain, had a pretty sustainable level compared to other Wild Brain seasons. So yeah, that's all for today's video, I'm expecting season 15 to become my favorite new Ninjago season by far, and might even be one of my favorite Ninjago seasons overall. So yeah, we'll wait and see. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, share your friends, and I'll see you next time.